Okay, sorry it's taken so long to get uh, back to you guys and do another video. Hold on, I'm trying to mute the TV. Um, so I thought we'd go with the four chamber view because that's the next in line. So this is a relatively straightforward view. Um, it's taken from the um, lower left hand side of the patient, patient's chest um, near the like an axillary plane or uh, the armpit itself. So you're down usually um, to the left side of the breast and uh, it can be up a little, it can be down a little, it just depends upon the patient. So we'll get into some of these pictures and I'll show you how four chamber looks. Okay, here's a four chamber view. This looks like end diastole, just about ready to uh, go into systole and kick the blood out. Now this is a true four chamber view. So you have the left atrium here, left ventricle. This is the mitral valve. This is the right ventricle. This is the tricuspid valve. And this is the right atrium. This line going down here is the ventricular septum. And then you have a line down here, and that's the atrial septum. So, in a way, this is kind of how the four chamber view is lined up and looking. Um, posterior wall of the ventricle is here, and the apex is up here. And you can see it's kind of double there. So, um, that's basically an explanation of the anatomy. We'll get a couple more pictures up here so you can see it. Okay, these are my favorite pictures to show. I got to give credit to Mayo Clinic. These have been out for a long, long time, but the person they have up at Mayo, I'm sure that this is, these pictures are 20 years old at least, but the guy who used to draw out the heart, you know, would take an actual pathology cut and really, I mean, just draw a beautiful picture of what the inside of the heart looks like. I've had the, um, when I was in training, they were actually from an autopsy, they had removed the heart and we got to look at the inside of it. And I mean, this guy really draws these things perfectly. So everything is labeled here, you know, including um, papillary muscles. You can see one here and then there's a second one up here, kind of buried. And then uh, um, the apex, which is here. And then it points out the septum, which is here. And then the inner atrial septum, that goes along here. And again, these are um, pulmonary veins. These are the lower. You can see one of the upper, it looks like. Um, and then the tricuspid valve is here. So you can see the valve itself. These are the what they call chordae tendinae. And, uh, then the bottom of the right ventricle has a lot of what they call trabeculations, which is our little lines. And that's a good hint for you to know whether you have the image upside down or not. If you, the trabeculated ventricle should always be when you're looking at the screen on the left side. So you can see these over here on the left, the trabeculations. Um, and it, that's a good way of knowing you're in the right area. Like I said, this is basic echo. So uh, I'm teaching this so that a person who is just learning gets a better idea of what's going on. This is the LV outflow tract, and you can see the aortic valve here. So um, that's a good drawing of the four-chamber view. Okay, here's another four-chamber view. The reason why I use this one is you can see that this is not as clear as the other ones were. You know, if you have a patient who's a smoker or you have a patient with lung disease, emphysema, chronic bronchitis, things like that, the image starts to fade the four chamber view and it becomes harder to see, um, you know, the true ventricles and the, the finer points, the valve leaflets, things like that. The anterior mitral valve leaflet is usually the easiest one to see because it moves quite freely and it's usually thicker 
than the other leaflets as time goes by. Patients who are older will have a thicker anterior mitral leaflet. But this too is labeling all the ventricles. It's also giving you a anterior mitral valve leaflet and a posterior mitral valve leaflet. Um, but in this view, it's almost impossible to see the posterior le m m sorry, mitral valve leaflet. But this is a good way of showing you that not all four chambers look perfect. Okay, here's one with uh, super information on it. Uh, it's got a little bit of everything. This is systole, so this is when the LV itself is contracting. So you can see that um, the walls are starting to kind of come inward so that the ventricle is squeezing everything out. If you could see the aorta, it would be going this way. Um, that's what's called the five-chamber view um, or a four-chamber with the aortic outflow and, and the leaflet there. It's just uh, a five-chamber is considered a different view in some places. It's other places they just put it in with the four-chamber view. So it just depends upon where you're working. Um, they show the descending thoracic aorta, the right lower pulmonary vein, um, the inner atrial septum. It always looks like there's a hole in the inner atrial septum in the four chamber view in some patients. Um, don't be fooled. That's usually just because the atrial wall is so thin it just isn't picked up by the machine. The machines aren't always that sensitive to pick up little, it's usually two millimeter um, pieces of tissue and stuff like that can be faded and not seen well. Um, but everything else is labeled here, the ventricular septum, the tricuspid valve leaflets, mitral valve leaflets, but it's a good view and it's a good one to see um, if you want to, you know, give a, uh, uh, print it and you know, give a good way of looking at it. It's uh, it's a good view. Okay, technically this is a four-chamber view, but this is a four-chamber view with someone who has a very enlarged right side of the heart. As you can see, you know, the right atrium and the right ventricle are much bigger than the whole left side of the heart. Um, there's also, PE stands for pericardial effusion. So if you look at that, um, there's a pretty large pericardial effusion on this patient. It's, it's probably not significant in the sense of causing the patient a significant amount of problem because the pressures in the right ventricle and the right atrium are so high that it's hard for enough fluid to get in there to collapse. And this could be a patient who just had a pulmonary embolism, it could be a patient with significant uh, lung disease and the pressures in the right side of the heart have, you know, just gone way up and, and caused the right side to dilate. Um, one of the problems that can happen in this situation is they go into heart failure not only because the right side is big, but also because it's compressing the left side of the heart and you don't get as much blood into the left ventricle. So, um, it's an interesting picture and it's just one way of showing you that all four chambers don't look alike. All right, I just wanted to show you a quick color flow Doppler. I want to get into color flow Doppler on a separate separate lessons, but I thought I'd show you this. This is the LV in systole and it's pushing out the blood through the aortic valve and you can see that right here. Anything going away from the transducer, which is up here, um, depending upon which kind of machine you're using, sometimes they put it here, sometimes they put it here, sometimes they put it here. Um, when flow is going away from the transducer, which it is here, it's usually a shade of blue. If it's going towards the transducer, like this way, it's a shade of red. So keep that in your mind as a basic way of interpreting color flow and we'll get into it a little bit deeper later on. All right this is the last one and then we'll be done with this session. Um, I wanted to show you this just because this is a pediatric view in most cases um, and what it is it's a basically an upside down picture of their heart 
in the sense of echo. In the sense of anatomy, this is actually much closer to the true anatomy inside the chest wall. So this would be like if you were looking almost directly into the chest from the, you know, the patient being in, you know, standing up next to you or in front of you. If you could peer through the chest wall and everything, this is what the heart would look like in true um, anatomy. So in pediatrics, because it's so important to know exactly what chamber is what, also if there's a missing chamber, also if there's a problem with the valves, VSD, which is very common in children, can cut across the septum. Sometimes you pick it up there. Um, but there's a lot of labs are starting to use this image as their true for chamber image. So if you're in one of those labs, then you're going to have to get familiar with this view. Um, as time goes on, I hope that they actually go to this view and change the four chamber to this because it's really much easier when you grasp it, um, especially with color flow and everything like that. So we'll see. Maybe it'll change. Um, it hasn't changed in 30 years because that's how long I've been in the field. So. I don't know if they'll ever change it, but if they do, I think it's a good idea. So listen, you guys have a great day, and uh, I'll do the next one as soon as I can.